Welcome to Untold Stories of Innovation, where we amplify untold stories of insight, impact, and innovation. Powered by Untold Content, I'm your host, Katie Trout-Taylor. Our guest today is Ryan Eater. He is founder and CEO of Include Health, which is transforming musculoskeletal results through digital solutions. Ryan, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Oh, thank you for having me. So tell us about your personal story of innovation and where it began. Oh, my story of innovation goes back 14 years. So um, my background's in design product design, industrial design, and actually Include Health started as my senior thesis out of the University of Cincinnati. It started through a parallel but different lens. It actually uh, started through the lens of accessibility. I was working out at a gym on the west side of Cincinnati and uh, saw a guy in a wheelchair struggle while exercising. And noticed he had like a bag full of homemade accessories to help him transfer in and out of his chair and adapt to the various equipment. And he spent more time doing that than actually exercising. So, you know, in my mind, I thought it's hard enough for any of us to stay active and healthy, let alone if you're dealing with equipment that doesn't even consider your needs. And so I actually, you know, focused my senior thesis on developing a piece of physically accessible fitness equipment that really removed all the physical barriers and provided a platform for people of all ages and abilities to stay active and healthy. Wow, that's incredible. Uh, thanks. Yes, that's where it started. And it was literally, literally a 10 week project that I just kind of bunkered down. And, you know, the goal was to put everything I had learned out of uh, UC and DAP into the project, get a good grade and get a good job. Right. That was kind of the mindset back then. And um, so I did. I got a good grade and I moved up to uh, Columbus and started working as a product designer for a firm called Priority Designs. And now, about six months into that, I decided to enter my thesis into the International Design Excellence Awards competition. Back then, it was actually sponsored by Business Week. And that's a global competition for design firms and corporations to submit their latest and greatest products. And they had like a little baby uh, like uh, student category. And I was like, yeah, sure, I'm proud of it. Put it out there, see what it does. And lo and behold, out of like, I think it was 1,300 entries from 35 different countries and ends up winning gold best in show in people's choice. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was wild. Like the following year, Apple won for the iPhone and then subsequent years, Nike, Microsoft, and Tesla won. Oh my goodness. Wow. Wow. And so I'm six months out of school, right? And that happens. And I don't fully realize the gravity of what happened. And um that really was the catalyst to start taking that idea further. And um, there's multiple chapters in, in the history of Include, but that, that's how it got all started. So tell us a little bit more about what Include Health does. We're really focusing on lowering the barriers of keeping people active and healthy. And that's roots back to the original purpose of my senior thesis, right? Uh, what started as removing physical barriers has evolved significantly into the you know cognitive administrative barriers and really leveraging you know our one of our sayings is we leverage we provide digital tools for tangible solutions right and tangible results and so what we have now is this musculoskeletal platform that has you know at its core you have a HIPAA compliant medical grade cloud infrastructure and that is connected to connected equipment and sensors uh, to really drive next generation musculoskeletal care. So what that really means is that we were able to connect all various types of equipment, strength equipment, cardio equipment, that's traditionally used in physical therapy and rehabilitation and you know, general performance. And we're able to breathe digital life into that and really help quantify and qualify, you know, where someone is along their their health journey and help them more efficiently get from point A to point B through data, through connectivity, um, and through medical grade uh, instruction and, and programming. Tell us about the patient experience and the provider experience when they're working inside the Include Health platform. Sure. It's um, very simple. So, you know, again, with the design background, my whole philosophy is, 
you can have all the technology in the world, but if you can't deliver it in a very simple, intuitive and engaging way, it's, it's all moot. So from a practitioner side, which is where it starts, is we have you know online protocol authoring tools where you can go in and you can create your protocol for a total knee replacement, whether it's for a certain population, whatever it may be. And um, you can create it in a matter of seconds and set, you know, types of exercises, amount of resistance, the time, all these different parameters. And it automatically is available on any of your connected equipment. And then you can go up to the equipment um, with an RFID tag or an RFID sticker. We offer both options. And this is where the patient comes in and, um, you know, they log in and it's as simple as there's, there's a tablet there. And it says hi to the patient and like, welcome to your, welcome to your program. And it gives them information on how to do the exercises, how to set up the machine. Uh, you then get in the machine and it will, you know, do something as simple as counting your reps and tracking your range of motion to know you did a qualified rep. Then it, you know, counts rest time in between your sets and your exercises. And that's really from a patient standpoint, what people love is just real simple, but in the back end. While we're doing that and giving this, you know, live autonomous guidance, we're collecting a data set on that individual to really help quantify and qualify their health and performance. So we're building a digital profile of velocity, force, power, tempo, range of motion, symmetry. We can start understanding deficits between someone's left side or their right side, which is a key indicator uh, for potential injury risk. And we send all that data back up to the cloud where both the patient and the practitioner have access to that data. You can see an automatic report that's put together every time you do a session that lays out exactly what you did and how you met those goals. And, but then also there's powerful you know, analytic tools where we can look at your progress over time. From an individual, of course, it's making you know, your health tangible and saying, okay, I can see how you know, my strength is increasing and my range of motion is increasing versus just kind of what historically has been a very um, kind of soft, just like, okay, I think I feel better, but I don't really know how to describe it any more than that, right? And uh, from a practitioner side, they're able to pull all their data from their patients together and start analyzing macro trends and seeing how effective certain protocols are across certain populations, across certain demographics, and really start to you know, get insights and in how to deliver the most efficient um, and effective care they can. Yeah, imagine this has really, really incredible potential implications for fields like physical medicine or um, occupational therapy in terms of being able to create new clinical outcomes data and, and sort of be able to see, like you mentioned, be able to see what is the state of the art? What are the new, uh, what, what thresholds sort of in terms of exercise capability or flexibility or range or strength, how do those sort of align with pain and pain data? Oh, yeah. and, and, oh my goodness, there's so much potential, I think, for clinical outcomes and to create new ways of perhaps creating validated measures for some of those things. It's unbelievable. And what's interesting is we have, I mean, our technology is deployed in a lot of different sectors of care. So from orthopedics to neuroscience, pediatrics, long-term care, like assisted living, independent living, or in the government, VA, and we've been working with the Air Force for the last year and a half. And, you know, across the spectrum, what's fascinating to me is that everybody essentially is trying to do the same thing. You were trying to object objectively define where someone is, I call it along the, the health spectrum. Essentially, where is someone's point A, where they are today, and what's point B, where you can get them, and how do you get them there, again, as effectively and efficiently as possible. And so we have you know, folks that are just rehabbing their, their total knee replacement, right, and getting them back to return to life. We have war fighters focusing on mission readiness and longevity. We have researchers in neuroscience that are mapping our data to Alzheimer's. And it's just, it's so exciting to be able to give them a powerful tool that lets them run with it and just continue to push, you know, their expertise. And so I always joke that at the end of the day, you know, we're just a bunch of design and tech nerds, right, that are want to provide a powerful tool to give it to the hands of the experts and to really just 
you know, drive efficiencies. I think there's a great lesson in the, the sort of circumstance that your organization is in, which is that you reach many different audiences for many different applications. Um, all of it, of course, focused on health and wellness. But could you speak a little bit more to how you have learned to craft the right story for the right audience in order to make sure, sure that, that the product resonates? At the end of the day, it's how a designer thinks. And what I mean by that is it's as a designer, you're learned, to, you're, you're taught to just listen and solve and deliver. And so, you know, through the years, I mean, when we started through the lens of physical accessibility, that was a whole, that was one whole group of challenges and issues that we needed to solve. And when we were going through that process, it actually came to when we were doing like a demo tour of the original machine without any software data or anything. And you start having this idea of like, okay, people are like, Oh, you know, and that'd be great. And I can do all my exercises and, you know, keep track of that. And you start thinking like, okay, well, how do you know what to do, how much to do and keep track of your progress. And that's kind of where the software started. And then the software really started to grow when you start to just loop in practitioners and experts and start collaborating. So we started to loop in trainers and therapists and physicians and payers. And you just listen and you understand the problems they're navigating and figure out how you can del deliver tangible tools to help solve those. And so, you know, then the more you listen, the more you understand the nuances of their world. So like when we talk about our platform, you know, the conversations we're having in orthopedics are very different than in you know long-term care assisted living and that's obviously very different than the military right um but you understand the common denominators between them and you're really just slightly tweaking the messaging to understand and map to their goals definitely i think listening is such an important aspect of, of all innovation storytelling right if you're not in tune with your audience and who you're trying to reach and you're getting feedback too and, and refining it along the way then uh then it's certainly probably not as effective as it could be oh it's it's everything it's it's listening and then just relentless empathy yes and yeah. just thinking thinking about the world through the lens of someone else tell me more about the role that you notice empathy playing in getting buy-in and ensuring that your innovation is relatable and usable. I thread empathy into everything I do um, at, at its core. It's part of, it's part of my core existence. And you know, again, I, I credit a lot to just, you know, the design me designer mentality. And it's like, you don't design for yourself. You design for other people and you can listen and you can understand those problems. But then if you really try to put yourself in those, in their shoes, Right. And really try to think about things from their perspective, then you can relate on levels that you, you, you wouldn't even imagine. And this goes back all the way to my senior thesis, where as part of me trying to understand the challenges of physical accessibility, I rented a wheelchair and went to local facilities and tried to work out in a chair myself. Um, I joined a wheelchair football league and played wheelchair football every Saturday for like the month of May just to even understand some of the cultural aspects of it. And, you know, you're just, it's limited, it's limited immersion, right? You know, let's be real, it's 10 weeks. And so you're not going to understand the depths of what it means to be paralyzed in any fashion, but you can start to get these little nuggets and understand these different components to it. And that all feeds into your ultimate design that sometimes you, it's, it's, people can't even describe it, but they realize that it connects with them. And it's because of all of that, immersion and empathy and listening all rolled up and, into, you know, hopefully something of value. How did you get the bravery and the boldness to step outside your own sort of life circumstance and try, try those things out, try run those experiments that can be really difficult or challenging for a lot of people. Yeah, it, it can, it can be like the, you know, I, I kind of had this epiphany when I was going through school where when I was when I was young in the early ages, like I was really just fascinated with the aesthetics of design, of making something, you know, a great visualization that just people got excited about, said, oh, that looked really cool, but it, it you know, didn't really have a lot of substance behind it. And, you know, my, my last co-op out of UC was with a design firm out in Portland, Oregon called Ziva Design. And when I was out there, 
what I loved about them is they, they just broke down everything into its like fundamental foundational elements, any problem, whatever, however big or small it be, they would just break it down and really start making things tangible and digestible. And I applied that to this. And, you know, I, admittedly, I just happened to be at the right place at the right time where I saw that guy struggle at the gym. I, I belonged at that gym for five years. I'd never seen him there. Right. So that one time at the right time in my design education, and I saw that and just things aligned where I've always felt like, what's the point of designing something if you're not solving a problem and helping people? And that just seems like the perfect application for it. And then for me, it was my senior thesis. I'm, like, I'm going to go all in and see where this takes me. <laughs> now, yeah. now, now, 14 years later, uh, this is where we are. So it's been a it's been a wild journey. Do you share some of those stories internally amongst your teams to kind of continue embedding the value of empathy and its role in the way that Include Health will continue to innovate? Oh yeah, uh, I mean it's it's easy in you know in this in our in our industry where you can get wrapped up in the, the technological stack and the details of communications and protocols and metrics and you know all of that piece of it, right? Yeah. And so often you'll get in these conversations, you're like, wait, does that matter to the person? Does that matter to that practitioner? Does that matter to that patient that's just trying to get back home and spend more time with their family? Right. And, and it's, you always just roll it back up to that. And, you know, a lot of times that kind of reveals a moment of truth where you're like, oh yeah, right. Okay. never mind. All right. Let's go this path. <laughs> sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, Tell us a little bit more about, you know, your visions for the impacts that that you're able to make as CEO of Include Health. The the opportunity in front of us is just immense. Um, you know, I have just first, you know, firsthand perspective of, you know, seeing, I mean, our first workout on the system was from a quadriplegic veteran uh, at the Cleveland VA. And he was able to use our various adaptations to, you know, independently exercise for the first time. You see that and I mean, you get goosebumps, right? You know, we have some great partners where, you know, we're helping teens with cerebral palsy help gain independence. We have some folks that are in their their 80s that literally log into our equipment and do their own workouts every day on their own and track their progress. You know, just helping people stay healthy is just, I mean, it's, it's fundamental, right? And when you feel like you can help contribute to that and help people just maintain a quality of life or help get them to where they want to go, I mean, it's so inspiring and it just constantly provides fuel to your fire to just keep pushing and keep expanding the platform. Yeah, so the impacts are incredible. I'm thinking last year in particular, our team at Untold, we collected what we called epic examples of innovation storytelling. And Mm -hmm. two of them that stood out from 2019, this again, this is last year, were the Microsoft We All Win campaign. Yep. Did you get to check mm-hmm. that out? Oh, yeah, yeah, I think it was it aired during the Super Bowl. And so it got a lot of visibility, but they had essentially created a controller that doesn't require, uh, you know, sort of more accessible. So you don't necessarily have to have all five fingers to use this video game controller. And the storytelling that they were able to share around mm-hmm. that innovation was so beautiful. I'll, I'll share a link in the show notes. The, the other example that we share in some of our innovation storytelling workshops is the Nike Fly Ease story, yep. which is a shoe yeah that you can sort of it's a uh, laceless shoe it doesn't use a zipper it's velcro based but um, it's meant to enable folks who uh, don't have that sort of very fine motor uh, capability to be able to put their shoes on by themselves and it, it all kind of started from a letter that a high school senior wrote to nike to say i when i go to college i i want to be able to put my shoes on by myself, Nike, can you please help me make that possible? So I think there's a a new level of social impact that the public in general is looking for out of innovation and and for innovations themselves to be inclusive. Um, And and I I think that's beautiful. Your, your, Your work really falls in line, I think, with a lot of those types of innovation stories that are coming out too. Yeah, it's at the end of the day, it's, it's just a very, it's on a very human level, right? And so it's, 
again, technology for technology's sake. I mean, I'm, I, again, I classify myself as a tech nerd. I love technology, but you know, you, you don't get more visceral than, and then helping someone on a very human level and, you know, being able to help a wide variety of populations, you know, is just, it's so rewarding. And all those stories you shared are just, I mean, they're very inspiring, right. From these brands. And then what's, what's very exciting from my perspective is that, you know, it started from this, this lens of, of accessibility. And that is, I, I describe it as, you know, it has fanned. And what I mean by that is like, there's, there's a terminology in the startup world where startups pivot, right? You're going in one direction, all of a sudden you got to completely go 90 degrees the other way to just keep going. And they change kind of their goal and their mission along the way. And for us, you know, I say, I like to say we fanned because our story, our starting point is still exactly the same of making health and performance more accessible. Um, it's still there and we're solving that problem. But now we're just doing it in such a broader way. And to be able to apply this set, same technology towards our war fighters and to help ensure that they are in optimal condition, you know, for warfare and mission readiness and longevity. And what you can do from a human performance side of things to then what you can do from musculoskeletal care and total knee replacements, total hip replacements and the, and the, and the deep medical application. It's just, um, you know, I never would have imagined all the applications for this type of technology that started as a product and now as a platform. And it's, um, it's extremely exciting. Can I pick your brain a little bit? Because sure. you really are able to take your platform and think about these different applications and adapt your story for each of those audiences. Can you share with us some of the challenges that you notice around telling effective innovation stories? Why is it so hard? It's interesting because I don't particularly find it that hard because I, I think as a designer, you learn how to tell a story, right? You learn how to tell a narrative and, you know, peop, everybody loves a really good story. Um, I'm very fortunate that our origins are so are rooted in a really good story of, you know, helping people, you know, seeing something that needs to be fixed, fixing it, and then being, having, getting early recognition for it. That lays a really strong foundation. Yeah. For us, oh, definitely. Right? Yes we've just built on that and it has continued to grow where, you know, <laughs> the, the funny story is like we, we went through years where I was just doing this nights and weekends kind of after those awards. And then uh, we had some challenges, you know, as any young company does getting the proper funding and support to kind of get it to the next level. And um, we ultimately, you know, we did and we kept building and kept iterating and kept expanding. And then like in, um, 2016. So, I mean, I originally won those awards in 2007. Yeah. We basically, we basically went dark. No one heard about us after that really until 2016, where we bubbled back up and said, here's the evolution of this. And here is this digital platform with the software and all. And we could tell this, this expanded story uh, with those same roots. And we, we decided to enter it back into that design competition that we won in 2007. I was under the assumption we'd probably get disqualified because you know, of, of its heritage, right? And its lineage to the original machine. And lo and behold, we ended up winning best in show again. Oh, wow. That That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it was wild. And so like now, now we've won 29 innovation and health awards. And um, it, it is all about telling this story and understanding why you're here, what you're doing, how it can help people. And, you know, if you can thread that together in the correct way, just doors open. There's a lesson learned, too, here around putting your name out there for innovation awards and oh, yeah. uh, allowing that to force you to refine the story and, and get it right. Well, yeah, absolutely. And, then you know, like a lot of times, you know, articles on companies are all about the wins, Right. Uh, the win of a war, the win of funding or a new customer partnership, you know, you never see articles about the loss. Right, and yeah. the, the, re the reality of it is for every yes that I've received is at least 10 to 15 no's. Wow, and yeah. you, you, I mean, there's a process where like, I, I think if I can remember driving home from different meetings or different events, like white knuckling it, just screaming in my car because I was so frustrated and, you know, felt like this wasn't going to move forward. And, you know, the, the path of building a company from scratch is really tough. And yeah, you, you learn to build 
thick skin. You learn to take every loss as a, a moment to get better and understand why was that a loss, um, you know, and help inform kind of your next opportunity to hopefully convert that into a win. But that's really, that's really tough for a lot of people. And, you know, sometimes it can be, uh, be an emotional roller coaster for folks just kind of getting into you it. You took the words right out of my mouth. I was about to say that exact same thing. Really? <laughs> it's, it's such an emotional roller coaster. Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah, it it is. is. And I think um, whether you're, I mean, I think especially startup founders intimately feel this. And, but also, I, I think people who are on innovation teams inside of large organizations, it can feel the same way, you know, when you mm -hmm. hear no or not now um, or, or your idea is passed up for somebody else. You know, it's just, it, it can be, um, um, it can be really frustrating, the, the whole experience and resilience, I think, is the thing mm -hmm. that all of us innovators have in common and uh, the ability to bounce back and learn quickly from our, uh, our failures. Absolutely. I'm so grateful for this conversation. Would you share with us some keys to success in your mind, sort of pieces of advice that you would give to innovators as they prepare to share their great ideas? Yeah, let's see. So I think, you know, when you're sharing your idea, my recommendation is always wrapping it in a narrative, right? People love stories. And the less you can be in like, quote unquote, pitch mode, and more about just telling a compelling narrative, the better because people will just innately be more engaged, right? And then the other big piece is just in line with what we just talked about is be okay with no. And, you know, try not to get too emotionally high or emotionally low through the journey. You'll have some wins, you'll have, you know, in reality, you'll have a lot more losses than wins, but your wins will be bigger than the sum of your losses. But you have to, you have to learn from those and try to look at things objectively. And, you know, the more emotion that's tied into it, the harder it is to look at it objectively and say, you know, maybe they're right, or sometimes maybe they're wrong. I mean, there's also people that give you bad advice right? Not everybody has the best advice. And so that's a hard thing to balance. But I think it's it's kind of knowing your true north, um, but being objective enough to understand how to get there and know that the path is not always linear. Absolutely. I love that. Ryan, thank you so much. Would, would you share with us where listeners can find you and include health? Yeah, sure. Um, go to includehealth.com. Uh, we are on you know all the social channels as well, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram. Um, you know, connect with me on LinkedIn as well. Like I'm always happy to connect with others and, and help any way I can to get people to get their ideas out there and um, make an impact. Ryan, thank you. I can't wait to keep following Include Health and see all of the incredible impacts you're making. Thanks for being on the podcast. Uh, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thanks for listening to this week's episode. Be sure to follow us on social media and add your voice to the conversation. You can find us at Untold Content. 